Chapter One of Dolly and I. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Victoria Bell. Dolly and I by Oliver Optic. Chapter One. Do you know what envy means? I hope you have never felt it, for it is a very wicked feeling. It is being sorry when another has any good thing. Perhaps you will know better what the word means when you have read my story, and I hope it will help you to keep the feeling away from your own heart. Not far from Mr. Lee's house in Riverdale lived a man by the name of Green. He was the agent of one of the factories in the village. Mr. Green had two little girls and three sons. The boys have nothing to do with my story, and for that reason I shall not say a great deal about them. Katie, Mr. Green's older daughter, was ten years old. She was a pretty good girl, but she did not like to have others get good things when she did not have any herself. If any person gave one of her brothers an apple or an orange, she seemed to think she ought to have it. When she was a baby, she used to cry for everything she saw, and would give her parents no peace till they gave it to her. I am sorry to say they were sometimes very weak on this point, and gave her things which she ought not to have had just to quiet her. Her father and mother hoped when she grew older she would not want everything that belonged to her brothers. If Charles had a plaything, Katie wanted it, and would cry till she got it. Very often, just to make her stop crying, her mother made poor Charlie give up the thing. But as Katie grew older, she seemed to want everything that others had, just as much as ever. She was now ten years old, and still she did not like to see others have anything which she could not have. It is true she did not always say so, but she felt it just as much, and was very apt to be cross and sullen towards those whom she envied. Nellie Green was not at all like her sister. She was only eight years old, but there was not a bit of envy in her. She would give a part and often the whole of her apples, oranges, candy, and playthings to her sister, and to her brothers. She liked to see them happy, and when Charlie ate an apple, it tasted just as good to her as though she were eating it herself. She was not selfish. She would always divide her good things with her friends. Did you ever see a little boy or a little girl eating an apple or some candy, and another little boy or girl standing by and looking just as if he wanted some? Nellie always gave her friends a part. And then she not only enjoyed what she ate herself, but she enjoyed what they ate. This is the way to make apples, oranges, and candy taste good. On New Year's Day, Katie's aunt, after whom she was named, sent her a beautiful wax doll. It was a very pretty doll, and the little girl was the happiest child in Riverdale when the welcome present reached her. There was another little girl in Riverdale who was almost, if not quite, as happy and that was Nellie, her sister. It is true, the doll was not for her. She did not own any of it, and Kitty would hardly let her touch it, but for all this Nellie was pleased to see her sister so happy. The dolly's name was Lady Jane, for Kitty thought as she was a very fine doll she ought to have a very fine name. So, when she spoke to the doll, and she talked a great deal with her, she always called her Lady Jane. The two little girls had five or six other dolls, but none of them were anything near such fine ladies as Lady Jane. Their heads were made of porcelain or rubber or composition, and they had grown so old that they were really ugly. Mrs. Lucy, who had a rubber head, looked as though she had been through the wars. Her nose was worn out so that she had a great hole in the end of it. I suppose if she had wanted to sneeze, this hole would have been very handy. But Mrs. Lucy was a very proper young lady, and never sneezed in company. If she ever sneezed when alone, of course, there was no one present to know anything about it. There was another hole right in the top of her head, so that if she had had any brains, they would certainly have leaked out, but as Miss Lucy was not a strong-minded woman, I suppose she had no use for brains. One of the family of dolls was a little black girl whose name was Dinah. She had seen hard service in her day, and did not look as though as she would last much longer. Miss Fanny had once been a fine lady, but times had gone hard with her, and her fine clothes were both ragged and dirty. But hard times were not so very bad, for she wore the same smile as when her clothes had been new and nice. Miss Mary was a poor cripple. By a sad accident, she had broken one of her legs. Katie placed her on a table one day, and either because the height from the floor made her dizzy, or because she was laid too near the edge, she had tumbled off and one leg was so badly broken that neither a wooden nor a cork one could be fastened in its place. Therefore Miss Mary could not walk about the room, and never went anywhere except when she was carried, but she was not half so badly off as Miss Susie, who had broken her neck and lost off her head. The head was tied on with a string, 
but it kept on falling off while the family were at play. But Miss Susie didn't seem to mind it at all. She got along a great deal better without her head than you and I could without ours. Indeed, she wore the same smile upon her face whether the head was on or off, which teaches us that we ought to be always cheerful in misfortune. Besides these fine young ladies, there were two or three rag babies. But as you could not tell by the looks of them what they were thinking about, I will not say anything about them. They had no virtues worth telling. They never ate soup with a fork or gave money to the poor. Some of my readers may not think much of this family of dollies, but I am sure Katie and Nellie had fine times with them. They used to spend hours together with them, and the dollies used to do everything that anybody could do. Miss Fanny used to visit a great deal in spite of her dirty, ragged clothes. So did Miss Lucy with two holes in her head, and Miss Mary with her broken leg, and Miss Susie with her broken neck. All of them used to go a-visiting, except Miss Dinah, and she, being a black girl, had to do the sweeping and tend the door. These ladies were all of them so bashful that they would not speak in company, and Katie and Nellie had to do all the talking for them. But they used to make believe the dollies talked, and this did just as well. They used to say just such things as the ladies did who called on Mrs. Green, and never left without being urged to stay longer, and also to call again, which they always promised to do. On the whole, they were very wonderful dollies, at least they were until Lady Jane came, and she was such a fine lady, with her white silk dress and her real hair that none of them could shine after that. End of chapter 1《Chapter Two of Dolly and I by Oliver Optic. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Victoria Alice Bell. Chapter Two. One day Flora Lee came to see Nellie Green and to spend the afternoon with her. It was in the month of November and the weather was too cold to permit them to play in the garden, so they said they would have a good time in the house. Katie Green had to go away and could not play with them. Nellie was very sorry for this for she not only liked to have her sister with her, but she also wanted the company of Lady Jane. She told Flora how sorry she was, and they agreed that it was too bad Katy had to go away, for she was older than they and could help them a great deal in their plays. Besides, they wanted one fine lady among the dollies, for they had a certain play which required just such a person. "'I wish I had brought Miss Dolly with me. I guess she is fine enough,' said Flora." "'I wish you had,' replied Nellie. "'But as you have not, we can't help it now. "'I dare say Miss Fanny will do.' "'I'll tell you what you can do, Nellie.' "'What?' "'You can just ask Katie to lend you her dolly. "'We won't hurt her a mite, you know. "'We will use her just as if she were made of glass.' "'Nellie did not know what to say. "'She did not like to ask Katie to let her play with Lady Jane, "'for she knew how careful her sister was of her fine lady.' and she did not like to tell Flora her thoughts, lest she should think her sister was selfish. She did not like to have anyone think hard of her sister. "'We must have Lady Jane. I don't see how we can get along without her,' added Flora, a little puzzled by the silence of Nellie. "'I don't like to ask Katie,' said Nellie at last. "'Why not? She will let you have her. Of course she will let you have her,' added Flora warmly. "'I don't think she will.' You know we might break her neck or lose off her legs or arms, or we might dirty her white silk dress. But we will be very careful. Let us go and ask her. It won't do any harm to ask her, you know. She can't do any more than refuse. Nellie did not like to be refused, and she tried to prevent Flora from going any farther in the matter. She was sorry to have it appear that her sister was selfish, and she thought more of this than she did of being refused. Flora said so much that at last she thought Katy might let her have the doll, and they ran downstairs to the sitting room to have the matter settled. "'Will you lend us your dolly, Katie?' asked Nellie, and the tones of her voice showed how doubtful she was of the result of the question. "'What dolly do you mean?' asked Katie. "'Your wax dolly, Lady Jane.' "'I am very sure I shall not,' replied Katie. "'We will be very careful of her,' added Flora. "'We won't let her be hurt a bit.' You may depend on that. I am not going to let you have my dolly to break and spoil. I am sure I shall not, said Katie, who even seemed to be angry because she was asked. But don't I say we won't hurt it a bit, continued Flora, and when you come over to my house, 
You shall have my dolly just as long as you want her, and her house too, and all the chairs and tables and things. I don't want them. Do please let us have Lady Jane, teased Nellie. We want her ever so much, and I know she won't get broken or dirty. Please lend her to us, Katie. I shan't do any such things, so it's no use to tease me. Why don't you play with your own dollies? I won't let Lady Jane. That's flat. Nellie felt so bad she could not help crying. Not because she could not have the doll, but because her sister was so harsh and unkind. She would not have cared so much if Flora had not been there, for she did not like to have her see her sister behave in this manner. Poor Flora wanted to cry, too, when she saw how badly Nellie felt, but she tried to be brave and placed her arm round her friend's neck, as if to let her know that she would be kind to her. "'Come, Nellie, let's go upstairs again. We won't say anything more about it,' said Flora, and she led her out of the room. "'Now you won't like Katie after this,' replied Nellie. "'Oh, yes, I will.' Katie would have lent us the dolly. <laughs> Only Aunt Jane gave it to her, and she is afraid it will be broken. If it hadn't been for this, she would have lent us Lady Jane. I know she would,' added Nellie, wiping away her tears. "'I dare say she would, but we won't think anything more about it. "'And when I come over again sometime, I will bring her something, "'just to show her that I don't feel hard towards her.' "'What a dear good girl you are, Flora. "'I was afraid you would hate her after what she said.' "'Oh, dear, no. I should hope not. "'My mother tells me I must love those who don't do what I want them to do, "'and I try to do so, but it's very hard sometimes. "'I wish you had a wax doll, Nellie. "'You ought to have one. "'You are such a good girl and love your sister so much, "'even when she is not kind to you.' "'I wish I had one. "'It would be so nice to have one like Lady Jane. "'I should be so happy. "'But then if only one of us can have one.' I would rather Katie had it than have it myself. You are not a bit selfish, Nellie. Do you know what selfish means? I do. I guess I do. It means when you have an apple or any candy to refuse to give a part to your sister. Yes, or to anybody that happens to be with you. Candy is good, but don't you like to see others eat it almost as well as you do to eat it yourself? Well, yes, I think I do. Then you know just what I mean. And I guess we'll play visiting now. So we will, and Miss Fanny shall be the great lady, and Dinah shall be her servant. Yes, and this shall be her house, said Nellie, as she placed Miss Fanny in a large armchair which they were to make believe was her elegant mansion. You shall stay here, and I will bring Miss Mary to visit Miss Fanny. Flora bounded over to the other side of the room, which was supposed to be the home of the other dollies, and Miss Mary, in spite of her broken leg, was soon on her way to visit the fine lady. ting ling ling said Flora which meant that the caller had rung the bell, and Dinah appeared at the door. "'Is Miss Fanny at home?' asked Flora, speaking for the lady with the broken leg. "'No, ma'am, she is not,' replied Nellie, who had to speak for Dinah because, though her mouth was very large, she could not speak for herself. "'What an awful fib!' cried Flora. "'There she is. Don't I see her through the door?' "'But that's just the way some of the fine folks do,' replied Nellie, laughing at Flora's earnestness. "'It's an awful story, and I wouldn't say it even in fun.' Nellie said she would not say it again, only she wanted to have Miss Fanny do just as the big folks did, and so they played all afternoon, though Lady Jane did not honor them with her company. All the dollies paid lots of visits, and Flora went home. End of chapter 2《when Flora reached home, she told her mother what a nice time she had, and what splendid visits Miss Lucy and Miss Mary and Miss Susie had made to Miss Fanny. She could not help telling her mother what a good girl Nellie was, and how she loved her sister, even when she was unkind and spoke pettishly to her, with real hair and a white silk dress. Miss Lee thought such a good girl ought to have one, and the very next time she went to the city, she bought the prettiest wax dolls she could find for her. Flora was full of joy when she saw the doll and learned to whom it was for. She was a great deal happier than if the doll had been bought for herself, and she wanted to run right over to Mr. Green's with the beautiful present. She longed to see the eyes of Nellie sparkle as she saw the doll, and to hear what she would say when told it was for her, but Miss Lee thought they had better keep the doll till Christmas, and let her find it with her stocking in the morning. "'But then I shan't see her when she first gets the dolly,' said Flora. "'That is true, but you must write a little note.' which shall be pinned on the doll's dress. That will be splendid, mother, and I will go right away and write the note now. Flora got a pencil and a piece of paper and seated herself in the corner. 
She worked away for half an hour as busy as a bee, and then she carried the note to her mother. She was not much of a writer, having been to school only a year. She could only print the note. Flora was very fond of writing notes, and long before she could make a single letter, she would fill up a piece of paper with pothooks and spider legs and send them to her mother and Frank. She did not spell all the words right, but her mother told her how to correct them, and then she printed the note over again on a nice sheet of gilt-edged paper. Thinking my little friends might want to see this note, I have placed a copy of it in the book just exactly as she wrote it. Dear Nellie, this dolly is from me. I love you very much, and I wish you a Merry Christmas. Flora Lee when Christmas morning came, Nellie found the doll in a chair, close by her stocking. I can't tell you how pleased she was, but you can all guess. Then she took the note from the dress and read it. She was more pleased than ever to find it was from Flora. She almost cried with joy as she puzzled out the note, and thought how kind Flora and her mother were to remember her. What a dear you are, Miss Dolly, said she, as she took up the doll and kissed her, just as though she had been a real live baby. You and I shall be first-rate friends, just as long as we live. I will take such good care of you, dear me, why, mother, only think. What is the matter, Nellie? asked Miss Green, who was almost as much pleased as her daughter. Did you see that? What, child, what do you mean? Did you see those eyes? Yes, I see them. Why, just as true as I am alive. She moved them. I think not, my child. She is a very handsome doll, but I don't think she could move her eyes, if she tried ever so hard. But she did! I know she did! Aunt Nellie took hold of her head to examine it more closely, and she did so. She bent the body a little. There! As true as I live, she moved them again. Mrs. Green took the doll and found that the eyes did really move. It was funny, but it was true. Mrs. Lee and Flora knew all about it. The eyes were made of glass, and there was something inside of the doll which moved them when the body was bent. Let me see, said Katie, who had been looking on in silence all this time. Nellie gave her the doll at once, and she bent the body and saw the eyes move twenty times. The happy owner of Miss Dolly waited with patience till her sister had done with her. "'Why didn't Aunt Jane get me one like that, I wonder?' said Katie when she gave the doll to Nellie. "'I suppose she could not afford to buy one like this, for she is not so rich as Miss Lee.' "'But you shall have her to play with just when you want her,' said Nellie. "'Pooh! I don't want your old dolly.' snarled Katie. She isn't half so good as mine. I would rather have Lady Jane than have her any day. Why then did you wish your Aunt Jane had given you one like this? asked her mother. I don't care for her old dolly. She may keep it for all me, replied Katie. But it shall be yours just as much as mine, Katie, said Nellie in tones so gentle and sweet that her sister ought to have kissed her for them, and loved her more than she ever loved her before. But she did not. She was envious. She was sorry that it had been given to Nellie. Sorry, because it was a prettier one than her own. It was a very wicked feeling. She had some presents of her own, but her envy spoiled all the pleasure she might have taken in them. Nellie was almost sorry the doll had been given to her. When she saw how Katie felt about it, Miss Green talked to the envious girl till she cried about her conduct. She tried to make her feel how odious and wicked envy made her. Whenever Katie saw the new doll, she seemed to be angry with her sister. Poor Nellie's pleasure was nearly spoiled, and she even offered to exchange her doll for Katie's, but her mother would not let her do so. In a few days, however, she seemed to feel better, and the two sisters had some good times with their dolls. I say, she seemed to feel better, but she really did not. She did not like it that Nellie's doll was a finer one than her own, yet Nellie was happier for she thought Katie was cured of her ill feeling. Then she loved her doll more than ever. She was a cunning little girl and she thought so much of her new friend that she always used to say, Dolly and I. When her mother asked her where she had been, she would reply, Dolly and I have been having a nice time upstairs. Dolly and I used to do ever so many things, and no two little ladies could ever enjoy themselves more than did Dolly and Nellie. I am sorry to say that Kitty did not like Dolly at all. She could never forgive her for moving her eyes. It is true that after she saw how silly and wicked her envy made her appear to others, she tried very hard not to show it. We can be just as wicked without showing our sins to others, as we can be when we let the world see just what we are. When we are wicked, the sin is more in the heart than in the actions. Men may seem to be very good when they are really very bad. The people almost always find out such persons. Kitty was just as wicked, just as envious when her sister thought she was kind and loving, as she was on that Christmas morning when the doll was found in the chamber. You will be surprised and sorry when you see just how wicked her envy made her and I hope it will lead you to derive any such feelings from your own hearts. If you have such feelings, they will make you very unhappy, and the sooner you get rid of them, the better. End of chapter 3 
Chapter 4 of Dolly and I by Oliver Optic. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Victoria Alice Bell. Chapter 4 Lady Jane and Miss Dolly were kept in the lower drawer of the bureau, for they were very fine young ladies, and Miss Green wished to have them kept clean and nice. One day, about two weeks after Miss Dolly was given to Nellie, both she and Katie had been playing with the dolls, when the bell rang for tea. They ran downstairs, but before they went, they put the dolls in the drawer. As they were in a hurry, they were not very careful, and the dresses of both of the dolls were sadly tumbled. Mrs. Green, who was in the room, saw in what manner Miss Dolly and Lady Jane had been thrown into the drawer, and before she went down to tea, she took them both out, smoothed down their dresses, and put them back in a more proper manner. Katie and Nellie had had some talk about their dolls, and the envious girl had said hers was better than her sister's. Nellie did not dispute with her about it, but she saw that Katie had not got over that bad feeling yet. The children ate their suppers, and not a word more was said about the dolls. But Katie looked very sour. She was thinking about Miss Dolly's eyes, and wishing Lady Jane's eyes would move like the others. She finished her supper and ran upstairs again. By this time it was quite dark in the room where the dolls were kept, and Nellie and her mother wondered why she went up the stairs at that late hour. Katie was still thinking of those eyes. She thought her Aunt Jane was real mean not to buy her such a doll, and then she was very sorry that Flora's mother had bought it for her sister. While she was thinking these wicked thoughts, she went to the bureau and opened the lower drawer. It was so dark she could hardly see the dolls, but she took one of them out. Your dolly shall not be better than mine any longer, she said to herself. As she said this, she took the scissors from the work basket on the bureau, and finding one of the eyes with her fingers, she struck one of the points right into it. Then she turned the scissors, so as entirely to destroy the eye. Not content with this, she spoiled the other eye in the same manner. "'Now your doll isn't so good as mine, anyhow,' she said to herself as she put the poor spoiled lady back into the drawer. "'I would not have a little girl feel as she felt then for all the world.' Her heart was full of envy and wickedness. To gratify her ill feeling, she had thrust the scissors into the eyes of the doll. She knew how badly her sister would feel, but she did not care for this. Now Lady Jane was the best doll, and she did not care for anything else. She stayed in the room but a few minutes. Closing the drawer, she hastened downstairs and took a seat by the fire. She tried to look as though nothing had happened, but she was sour and sullen, for she felt that she had done a very naughty act. "'Come, Kitty, let us go upstairs and play with the dollies again,' said Nellie, when she had got through with her supper. "'I don't want to,' replied she, without even looking at her sister. "'Do come, Katie. "'I tell you, I don't want to,' snarled she. "'You can bring your dolly downstairs and play with her here, Nellie,' said her mother. "'May I, mother?' "'You may. Take a light with you.' I don't want any light, mother. I can find her just as well in the dark. And away she ran to get the doll. Don't you think Katie trembled then? She did tremble, like a leaf, and wished she had not done the naughty deed. In a moment Nellie would return with poor Miss Dolly, whose eyes had been spoiled with the scissors. She did not think it would be found out so soon, and she could not think what to say before the doll came down. She felt just as though she should sink through the floor when Nellie came into the room with the doll in her arms. There would be an awful time in a moment, and her father and mother would want to know who had spoiled Miss Dolly's eyes. They knew she had been upstairs since tea, and they would charge her with the naughty act. She meant to deny it, for those who are wicked enough to do such things are almost always wicked enough to lie about them. "'Now won't you and I have a nice time, Dolly?' said Nellie as she rushed into the sitting room with the doll in her arms. "'Come, Katie, let's play Dolly as the Queen of England.' "'I don't want to play.' "'Well, won't you make me a crown for her?' I can't. Kitty was waiting for her sister to find out the mischief that had been done, and she dreaded the moment when she should do so. She did not dare to look at her, for fear her looks might betray her. You shall be queen without any crown, said Nellie, as she placed the doll on the table. This pin cushion shall be your throne. There, you look just like a queen, don't she, mother? I think she does, replied Miss Green with a smile. I hope she will be as good as Queen Victoria. She will, mother, only she ought to have a crown. I've got a piece of gilt paper upstairs, and I will make her one. I'm going up in a minute. Kitty, not daring to look yet, did not know what to think of this talk. How could the doll look like a queen when her eyes had been punched out with the scissors? It was very strange to her, and she stole a glance at the queenly Miss Dolly on the table. There she was, seated on her pincushion throne, just as if nothing had happened. Her eyes were just as bright as ever, and as Nellie bent her body, she moved them as well as ever she could. Katie did not know what to make of it. She had certainly driven the scissors into the eyes of the doll as hard as she could, but there was Miss Dolly as good as new. She could not explain it, and it was of no use to try. 
Mrs. Green brought down the scissors and cut out the crown. Then Miss Dolly certainly looked like a queen, and Nellie spent a very pleasant hour with Her Majesty till it was time for her to go to bed. Kitty was very unhappy. She had not done what she meant to do, and she was filled with doubt, but she did not have to wait long to find out what she had done. When Mrs. Green went up the stairs with the children, Miss Dolly had to be put to bed first, for she was a queen. When the bureau drawer was opened, what do you think they saw? There lay Lady Jane with both of her eyes punched out. Kitty burst into tears when she saw that her doll was entirely spoiled. Then she found that she had made a mistake. In the darkness, she had punched out the eyes of Lady Jane instead of Miss Dolly. This is the way that wicked people often punish themselves instead of others. Her mother had changed the places of the dolls in the drawer, and this was the reason why Kitty had made the mistake. Don't you think it served her right? Kitty felt so badly that she could not tell any of the lies she had made up and the truth was found out by her mother. Mrs. Green scolded her for what she had done, and for what she meant to do. The naughty girl cried herself to sleep that night, but poor Lady Jane was utterly ruined. Nellie felt almost as bad as her sister, and said all she could to console her. The next day, Kitty was so ashamed of herself that she did not wish to see anybody, but in a few days she got over it, and her mother hoped the affair would do her a great deal of good. Whenever she showed a spirit of envy, Miss Green reminded her of her doll, and she tried to conquer the feeling, but it took many years to cure when you envy others, although you may not punch out the eyes of your own doll, you hurt yourself more than anyone else. End of chapter 4 and End of Dolly and Die by Oliver Optic